Welcome to Virch. I'm Dana Black, and this is The Table, a new progressive and inclusive Christian community in North County, San Diego. Thank you for joining us today. We're excited that you're continuing this journey with us. For today's Virch experience, Reverend Chelsea and I are excited to introduce you to Rhea Kloster, one of our launch team members. Rhea is going to share her faith journey with you including some of the struggles and how she transitioned in that journey coming from adolescence into young adulthood. Of course, you'll also hear from our wonderful musician, Talib. As we begin, I want to take a minute just, just to center ourselves in this present time. I'm going to light a candle and invite you to do so also if you have one as a reminder that Christ is with us. Christ is with us in this experience. So just let the noise and the distraction of the outside world just go away. Be present with yourself in this time. Be present with those that you may be sharing this space with. And most importantly, be present with God. I have found that to calm myself down and come into the present space, if I just take two deep cleansing breaths using a count of three on the inhale and the exhale, it helps my mind from wandering into different topics and again, just helps me center in and focus in on the space. So I invite you to do that with me right now. Just gently close your eyes and just inhale for one, two, three, and exhale one, two, three. Again, inhale, one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. And with our eyes still gently closed, quietly invite God into this space with you, saying, God, here I am. Your servant is listening. Please speak. Amen. Now as we gently open our eyes, just once again want to thank you for being with us, and I'll turn it over to Talib now. We can use this time to refocus our hearts, to call upon the God of creation. Please join me. God of creation, there at the start before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars were made to worship so will I I can see your heart in everything you've made Every burning star a signal fire of grace if creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty your void. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you say. Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. If 
creation still obeys you, so will I. So will I. Mm. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still falls shy. Then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. God of salvation, you chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created. The light of the world abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life, so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart and everything you've done. Every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly choose surrender, so will I. Today's reading is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little. I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. The word of God for the people of God. Hi, everyone. We're so excited. This is our uh, fourth Verge experience, and we're so thrilled to uh, have Rhea Kloster with us. Rhea, we uh, were just chatting a little bit before, but but we go way back. Um, I love to tell the story about how Rhea, Dana, um, Rhea actually kind of hired me when I started ministry. She was the youth representative on the hiring committee ninth grade with braces and just um this warm presence but we need a photo of that i know right we're hiring you 
I'll save you guys all from the braces. <laughs> we'll have to put one in this corner right here, whatever works. <laughs> But yeah, th that was almost 10 years ago. And, and so, Ray, we just, um, I have just witnessed part of your faith journey. And as you were trying to navigate as a high schooler and into college, and now you're through graduate school, uh, we just thought your story was a really powerful story uh, for young people everywhere who are trying to um, reconcile their faith and their world and all the things that come into play as a young adult. So thanks for being with us uh, today. We're excited to hear from you. Yay! Yeah, thanks for having me. So we thought we would start with just um, some fun, rapid fire, we'll break the ice type of question. So just the first thing that comes to your mind, just, okay. just blurt it out. Okay. 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 Biggest pet peeve? Um, when people cut me off when I'm driving. Oh, yeah. Because I, I get nervous that I'm going to hit them. <laughs> <laughs> what is a weird quirk of yours? Um, I love raw green beans. Raw I'm green better at more than cooked green beans. beans. Okay. If you could treat yourself to one thing right now, what would it be? Um, potato chips or french fries. French fries. Probably french fries. Anything in the potato family. <laughs> potato and salt. Ah, yes. I love potatoes. When I dance, I look like... Um, <laughs> Is that the face you make when you're dancing? <laughs> <laughs> that's the face people make when they watch me dance. <laughs> um, my signature move, I would say, is probably the funky chicken. So if that says anything about my, like, dancing abilities, um, that's it. A chicken, yeah. Okay, we'll have to have that in the blooper reel. No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay, favorite childhood TV show? Oh, maybe, like, uh, I was such a Disney girl. So, like, uh, Hannah Montana, A Sweet Life of Zack and Cody um like those like typical disney wizards of waverly place those ones love them okay uh in one word how would you define happiness that's hard um the first word that popped my head when you said that was family um and i think like digging into that's like not just my immediate family but like my family and my chosen like my bio and my chosen families um so like being around the people that like feel the most like family to me is like my pure happiness beautiful what impresses you um like um like a sense of confidence in someone like I don't want like I don't like when people come off as like cocky but just like confident in who you are like being able to hold a conversation um, with other people, um, like being confident in yourself. Yeah, I get that. Good. That was the last one. You made it. So, Ray, we do, we do go far back, but um, I'm wondering if you can share uh, with everybody listening just a little bit about your faith journey. Yeah. Um, I would say my faith journey started when I moved to um, San Diego from Colorado. So I was in kindergarten. And pretty shortly after, my parents found um, SDUMC, and that was, like, the church that we started going to um, as a family when we were young. Um, and I always just really loved it from a young age. Like, my parents had given us the choice. Like, like if we didn't want to go to church, we were not forced to go to church. But my brother and I both, like, really enjoyed it. And I got really involved in the church, like, even from a young age. Like, I was in the little choir and... Um, then, like, as I got older, um, <clears throat> in, like, middle school and high school, I helped out with the younger youth groups and stuff like that, and I just absolutely loved it. Um, my whole family was really involved. My mom was, too, and so that was, like, inspiring to me. And then, like you mentioned, Chelsea, and when I was in ninth grade, um, I was on the, like, hiring committee when we were looking for a new youth director, um, and just, like, from the interview that we first had when we met each other for the first time. Like I just felt like instantly super connected to Chelsea. Um, and you became just like a really big inspiration for me in my faith journey. Um, so that then motivated me to like keep going to church and youth group. And we did all of our like SSPs and like youth camp and um, Camp Cedar Glen, like all of those fun things. And just everything that I did at church just felt so like authentic. Like I was just so authentically Rhea. Um, and I just love that version of who I can be. Um, and so it just felt so right all the time. And I just really felt connected to the people there. It was nice to share it with my family, but also I was like, um, met some great friends that I never would have met outside of like being at church. Um, 
and just like felt so connected. And so then after graduating high school, I went to school in Arizona and kind of stopped going to church, like not really intentionally, but I think like the fear of like going to a new church and not knowing anybody and nobody knowing who I was just kind of like pushed me back. So I like stayed connected with my faith and <clears throat> like would talk to Chelsea all the time. And every time I was home, we'd go to lunch and like have our like catch ups and talk about, you know, all of those things. But I, I wasn't consistently going to church on Sunday and I totally felt it. Like I felt this just like missing piece. Like, and I, and I didn't do anything about it for way too long. You know, I kind of just was like, Oh, you know, none of my roommates go to church. None of my closest friends here go to church. So I just wasn't attending a church service on Sunday. I don't think that I like lost my faith at all. Um, I have like a devotional that I would read sometimes and like just stay connected with like my family and my friends who were religious. Um, and then I started going more like my junior and senior year. I found a church that me and a couple of my friends went to not every Sunday, but we went and were involved, but it was just different. Like I wasn't like so involved like I was in the church before and I missed it. Um, and so then I moved back home after that and then had like a little lull. And then Chelsea asked me to go to lunch and I just like, was like, yeah, you know, normal. We went to lunch and she Talk, like told me about the table and I knew this has been like one of her dreams forever and then asked me to be a member of the launch team and I was kind of speechless like I was like me and then I was like wait and I was like that's what I'm missing like this was the the hole that was missing from being so involved in the church growing up um was my faith had it I didn't I don't think I diminished in any way in my faith but that like involvement and that like feeling a piece of it and that um like connectedness to others who share the same beliefs as I, um, that was missing. So when Chelsea asked me to be a part of this table, it just felt right. And I just knew that I had to do it and I wanted to do it. Um, and so ever since then, we've been spending a lot of time together and focusing on the table. And um, I feel like I'm all in it again and I'm just really involved. And yeah, so that's, that's it. I was gonna say, when you, you were talking about high school and you said things like SSP and um, Cedar Glen, could you talk more about those? Because I, I know what they are, but I think, and I also think that they might have been fairly formative in who you are now and what you are ultimately doing right now, which we'll get to in a little bit. But can you talk more about that? Definitely. Um, so SSP is the Sierra Service Project, which they're like week long um, mission trips all around, like mostly in the West Coast um, that we went on as a youth group. Um, and I was able to share some of those with my dad and brother too, which were like the most meaningful ones to me being able to be with my family as well. Um, but we went to different places and we went to Northern California. We even did one in like South Central LA. Um, we did one in Arizona on a Navajo reservation. And so it's this week long trip of, um, like providing any services and labor and love to these communities that need more of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was anything from like building a wheelchair ramp to, um, we did some, we covered up some graffiti in LA. Um, we did gardening product projects, um, stuff like that. So we were doing like, like physical things to, like raise up the beauty and the functionality of these communities, right. but also sharing in faith with each other and with like other youth from all around. It wasn't just our youth group. It was a bunch of other youth. So like meeting other people and connecting and just kind of like no phones, no glitz and glam, like just camping or sleeping in a gym, just with each other, like focusing on the things that are most important. Um, so I loved that. I loved all of like the service stuff behind that community service is like huge to me and like has led into my career kind of. Um, and then Camp Cedar Glen is like the most beautiful, gorgeous camp up in Julian, um, California. And it's like these little cabins that we would go and there was like a youth camp that was just like a fun, like Christian based um, summer camp that I went to for years um, and was able to go to some with Chelsea as well. Um, and then we, we've done like family camp and like youth retreats and stuff there. And it's just this like very beautiful, serene, holy um, place up in, up in Julian. So, yeah. So Dana, and for everybody listening, Ray is like the, the youth you want in youth group, the one that you can always say, can you read scripture? Can you jump in and do this? She was always the one that was, 
would show up um, and you could count on, on Rhea to show up. Um, but it sounds like, you know, there is an individual practice to our Christian faith, right? Like the, our prayer and our solitude and our mindfulness and reading scripture. And it sounds like you had a devotional. And for some years, it was really only individual. Um, you moved away from community because there's a second part that we, we practice faith together in community. That's why we have church. And that's why we're, I think some of us are even struggling in this virtual way because we can't be together um, in the community that we're used to. So there's really this, this two pronged part to, to our faith life there's the individual and then there's the community or corporate part um so i guess what was that like for you to to go from the community part where you were so involved um and then for it to be a little bit more individual and then maybe if you can walk us back through what it what it now feels like to be back in community i guess um I'm extraordinarily extroverted. So the community piece of it, I think is um, like one of the most important parts. But like when I'm practicing my faith individually, I have like a lot more doubts and questions and don't necessarily have like somewhere to turn. Um, so being in community at SDUMC was like the like best for me. I really functioned well off of being with peers who were in the same place as me, having mentors like Chelsea, being with my family, all of that worked really well for me. So then going into a more individualized um, type of practice was difficult at first. And I thought for a while that because I wasn't physically going to church that I wasn't practicing my faith. Mm -hmm. Um and so it took me a while and some conversations with others to understand that there was still a way to do it um, individually. And perhaps there's many people out there who enjoy that better than being in community. But um, it was hard and it was harder for me to like be like to push myself, I would say, and like what I was learning and how I was growing. And I just had so many more doubts. And I was like, am I doing this right? Like, how do you read a devotional? Am I supposed to read it out loud to myself? Do I just, li you know, like it was just this whole like, and so I would like sit there and be like, I'm totally messing this up. Um, and then after a while, I just got more comfortable in it, like driving in the morning, like to work, I could spend that time praying or listening to like worship songs that I liked. And that in and of itself was like practicing my faith for me because I was able to really center myself, mm -hmm. bring myself back to like who I was and like my roots and what was important to me um, without being in community. So it was such an adjustment, but now I think I have more of an appreciation for practicing my faith and religion individually than I did before. Um, it's a lot more like introspective thinking. Um, and I, I do enjoy that now. Like it's, it helps me kind of like process what's going on, like in my personal life and all of the crazy things that are happening in the world right now. Like it kind of helps like bring me back to like a grounded place where I can like give just a little bit of like rhyme and reason. Um, but I did miss the community so much. And even going um, to a church service like in Arizona was just different because it wasn't like my community, you know, like it, and it was, it'll take time. Like joining a new church takes time. You have to meet new people. You have to um, like form those relationships and that can be really scary. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that fear kind of like pushed me away from getting really involved in a new community there. Cause I was like, Oh, my community's back home. My community's back home. Um, but then I spent four years of my life where I I could have been putting myself out there and have two communities um, kind of just like reluctant to like make the first step. Um, and so then when I came back home, started going back to church um, services on Sundays more often. And then when Chelsea asked me to become a part of the table, um, I just felt really called. Like I felt like there was such a need for a church community like this that it's so different than anything that I've been a part of and it just felt so right like I was like these are the things that I think of when I think about my faith mm -hmm. like our inclusivity our um all of honestly all of our all of our um values yeah core values yeah yes all of our core values authenticity authenticity is my word of 2020 so I was just like it's perfect um but then being back in community, it helps because I can ask those questions. I can be like, Chelsea, Dana, what's, you know, what's going on? What am I supposed to do? What should I do? And get other pieces of advice and input because I think it's really hard to practice your faith individually. Um, it helps me to center myself, but I don't, I'm, I, I can't grow as much in an environment like that. Um, 
So being back in a community, like I feel much more inspired to make change. I feel inspired to be involved. Um, I feel this like calling to do so. Um, when I was on my own, it was kind of like I only focused on myself and my faith. I didn't focus on how my faith and like my beliefs and my authenticity and all of those things, how they could connect other people and bring people together. It was very much so a personal journey. And now I feel like I'm back and ready to like be involved and um, like get friends and family involved who maybe haven't before if they're interested and are looking for a place to worship um, and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I think it makes perfect. I mean, you, you need the individual component and you also need the community. We need them together. And it is hard right now where we can't physically be together, but we have, thank heavens, the technology to at least have these experiences because it, this is community right here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Totally, yeah. So, Rhea, I, I, I heard you say um, that you grew up, you were raised in a family that was very active in the church. Um, you were very active in the church all the way through high school graduation. And then you head off to college. And it's different. It's a different experience. Uh, you have roommates and, you know, maybe they're not practicing Christians and, and you are. And, and it gets it gets complicated. So can you tell us a little bit more about what that transition has been like or was like for you? Yeah, so I, I did come from an actively practicing Christian family, um, and then when I went to college, all four years, um, I lived with, like, the same group of girls, and they were faithful, and they believed, but none of them were practicing. Um, none of them really had interest in going to church on Sunday mornings. Um, None of them had come from a family where they went to church every Sunday, so I was really the only, like, very active and involved um, woman in our household, and that was really hard, yeah. um, and then, you know, like, trying to find a church that I felt like I would fit in, like, that whole process and journey, like, going to church before my, my parents did that work for me. Like they were the ones that moved and researched churches and maybe tried out a few and then found one that fit and like felt right and then brought their kids with them. And so I didn't have to do that before. It was kind of just like given to me of like, Hey, we found this place and it feels right and let's try it out. Um, so then here I am as like a religious Christian young woman and I don't have that. I don't have the community already. I don't have my parents to come and like test him out and say, this is the one you should go to. You know, it was me. Um, and I was the one that had to make that decision. And that's hard. <laughs> that's scary. Like I was, can I go to church by myself? Like, you know, can I just show up to this church and I've never been there before? People are going to be like, who is this new girl? And like, why is she by herself? Like those fears of like trying to experiment and find those new things and not have my like support of people who I built my like faith with, with me. Like I was by myself in a group of young women who were not as religious as I was. Right. And so it's kind of that like, okay, I'm going to wake up in the morning and get ready and all my roommates are still in bed or they're going to brunch or, and I'm like, okay, I'm not, gonna, you know, I'm going to go to church. I'm not going to go. And so it was that hard balance of like my social life and being on my own. And there was no one there to say like, okay, come on, it's time for church. Like if my alarm went off at 830 and I didn't feel like getting up, like I could hit snooze and not get up. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, it's just one more week. It's yeah. just one more week. And my guess is you're not alone. I know I certainly, I mean, it's been years since I've been in college, but I certainly felt and had the same experience. And um, mm -hmm. did, did you judge yourself in those moments? Did you feel? Absolutely. Yeah, I most definitely did. And I think then that's what was hard about it. The longer that I said one more week and the longer that I said, oh, I'm going to go to brunch with my friends this Sunday morning, or I'm going to go on a hike, or I'm going to sleep in, or I'm going to, you know, make pancakes at home, whatever it was, the longer I did that, the first, like the more distance I felt and the more that I judged myself for not going. So the less like worthy I felt of being able to go. And Chelsea, I mean, for me, I think that's the theology that is just so unproductive, mm -hmm. right? That, that I know but I grew up with that. Go ahead. But also so, so common. Like, yeah. I think that so many of us are like, Sunday morning, that's when you do church. And right, just like you're saying, it's like, the more we put it off, the more guilt we feel. And the guilt, it keeps us from relationship with God. Mm. And I just, I just cannot imagine God sitting wherever God is sitting, judging us or um, 
being mad at us or, or, or anything. The only thing God's doing is it, it, he's busy loving us. So uh, we let that guilt come in the way and then it keeps us and keeps us and keeps us. And then to come back as this, we feel this big, you know, production when it really, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it's always there for us. Yeah. And then I would come home for a break or something and go to church with my family. And everyone was like, oh, it's great to see. And I was like, oh, I don't go to church every Sunday. Like I felt like almost like a phony going back and like, being the same person that I was when I wasn't practicing in the ways that I was before. So it was definitely hard. And it took like, it took having another person who felt similarly to me. It was actually my little in my sorority who came and she had practiced very similarly to how I had. We were looking for a similar community um, of like, you know, like a more fun and youthful and active church, church group. And Um, and so it took her being like, all right, get up, we're going tomorrow. Or me being like, I'll pick you up at eight, we're going. And, and having another person that I could share in with that I knew wasn't like judging me, like that I knew that we felt the same way. And I knew that we were looking for the same things and we could go to this church together and stand up and sing the hymns and have fun and, and be together. And I wasn't like, Oh, is she going to like think I'm bad at singing or, you know, like that whole, like. Like you just feel, me personally, I feel so much more judged when I'm alone and that's what kept me from going. But I think looking back, I think it's so important to understand that like if you're in like a healthy church environment, that that's not the case. Um, That by all means, we know that God isn't judging us and that he's loving us. But if you're in a healthy place, that those around you are excited that a new person wants to join their community and um, be a part of their lives, but also have them be a part of yours. And and I let that fear um, of like going to a new place and starting something new hold me back for way too long um that I wished it wouldn't have um and then realizing that I could go somewhere new and I could you know find my own church it was my church and my practice and not necessarily my family's and I would love for them to come and join in with me but we lived eight hours away from each other you know um and so it took like that push of having someone who supported me in going in order for me to find a place that I felt comfortable going yeah, that's a great story. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Definitely. So we ask all of the launch team members that we uh, sit down to have a conversation with to pick a scripture that they want to share. And Ray, I have to be honest, I knew that you were going to pick the scripture that Rebecca just read for us. Mm-hmm. I know it has been one of your favorites uh, since we met 10 years ago. And so um, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit more about that scripture, you know, why was it so important to you? How has it changed or how has it been a stronghold for you throughout, uh, throughout your life? Definitely. I think part of it is that I like really loved it from the beginning when I was like young, it was easy for me to understand and comprehend when I like was still learning what it meant to be faithful. Um, But then I think that it got so ingrained in me and it felt, it was like kind of like a fallback for me all the time. Like if I was really struggling or going through something hard, like obviously very different when I was like in middle school, you know, like I was like worried about like the middle school dance or whatever it was. And now my worries at work and in my life living on my own as an adult are much different than they were when I was in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I'm having a really hard time and just feeling so spiraled out in like my thoughts and my emotions um, and a lot of times and then like a thought process for me ends up in like feeling like I'm not enough or feeling like worthless or that I, I'm out of control, that I can't change something that's going on. Mm-hmm. Falling back to that last line of the scripture, I can do all things through he who gives me strength. That is just like, I just got the chills even just saying it, but that to me is just grounding. Like it brings me back to my place and it it helps me understand that I'm not alone in my journey, that there's someone else out there loving me and supporting me and that I can do it, that I'm capable. It brings me into my like positive self-talk. Like I can do it. I'm strong enough. I'm, you know, like those little things, but it's, it's not, it's more than just positive self-talk for me because it's like coming from like our Lord. And so having that, like I can do all things, like even just those few words I can do all things um is like really helpful and grounding and helps like helps me understand that things are bigger than myself and bigger than the people around me and there's things that I can't change and things that are so crazy going on in the world especially right now but just being able to ground myself and saying like I can do it and God's going to support me and love me through it um 
it's kind of just stuck with me for years and years. And I'm sure that if you were to ask me my favorite Bible verse in 30 more years, that I would probably say the same thing. (laughs) The stronghold for you. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you so much, Rhea. It has just been uh, a joy for me because this is an opportunity for me to learn more about you. I know Chelsea has spent so much time with you, but I just, I, I just, it's been a wonderful experience. I thank you for your time. Uh, we're grateful for, for you and for the journey that you've shared with us so openly today. Um, so once again, just thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful to have you too as inspirations in my life as well. We would love for you guys to join us on August 12th at 6 p.m. for a virtual happy hour. Um, If you guys have any additional questions or want to talk more about anything that we um, shared in Virch today, we would love for you guys to join us. And that's August 12th at 6 p.m. So grab a drink or a snack for a little happy hour, your friends, your family. um, We would love to just share a little bit of time in community where we can talk back and forth. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say Sunshine, she's here, you know you take a break I'm a hot air balloon that could go to space But the air like I don't care, maybe by the way Clap along if you feel like a room If you feel like happiness is the truth Clap along if you know what happiness is to you Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do The combat dudes talking this and that yeah. well, Give me all you got and don't hold it back I should probably warn you, I will be just fine. No offense to you, don't waste your time. Here's why, because I'm happy. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth Clap along if you know what happiness is to you Clap along if you feel that that's what you want to do Bring me down, I can't nothing Bring me down and my level's too high Bring me down and that nothing Bring me down because my level's too high Bring me down Bring me down, cause my level's too high Bring me down, can't nothing Bring me down, cause I'm